Honey in the morning, honey in the evening, honey at supper time. Be my little honey bees and make me honey all the time. Woo! Welcome! First, I'm going to tell you a little bit of story about why I'm doing bees. I grew up, uh, I'm almost working on 75 years old now. <laughs> and uh, my dad had bees when I was growing up. I had a cousin across the creek had bees. I had an uncle had bees. And I had an uncle who liked to tell the bee story. So when we moved here and uh, I got this piece of land, I wanted to get honeybees. So I got a hive of honeybees. I bought an old hive and set it up. And I've learned a lot over the years. Of, I had the honeybees sitting out here, but I didn't really know what I was doing. And uh, I had an older guy, he would drive by down here. He was a beekeeper. And he saw my honeybee hives. So finally he kept on stopping and coming to see me until he caught me here at home. And he started mentoring me and teaching me how to do it. So that's kind of my story of getting started. And Chris over here, I think through the bee club or something, we met. And he started helping me. So I'm going to let him tell his story. <laughs> My story is not as good as Benny's. Now, if you have, don't know, that, that was Miss Margie and this is Mr. Benny Quisenberry. We're in Carroll County today and it's June of 2020, just so you kind of know where we are. Now, these are some of Mr. Benny's beehives. He's got several more. How many do you have roughly total? There are 19, 20, not, 20 I believe. About 20, so that's only about half of what Mr. Benny owns. And I wanted to talk a little bit about bee, uh, honeybees and beehives. Normally we uh, ask, how many students live on a farm and we ask the teachers to count the hands and the reason we do that is because Carroll County is is deeply ingrained with farmers but we all know that without farmers we do not eat so if you're in a classroom right now raise your hand real quick for the teacher to count for farmers and those kids that live on a farm and now separately I'm curious how many of you want to be farmers when you grow up, a farmer of any kind at all, corn, soy, livestock, anything at all. And teachers, if you would, just say thank you to all those kids for both of us because, again, we don't eat without farmers. Very important. Now, let's talk real quick about a honeybee. A honeybee is a type of animal, and she's an insect. And since she's an insect, we know that she has two compound eyes, she has six legs, she has three main body parts, a head, a thorax, and an abdomen. And a honeybee actually has four wings, not two. If you see something with two wings, she's actually a fly. But four wings indicates that she's a honeybee for us. And those four wings allow that honeybee to hover over flowers and other plants. Inside of a colony of bees, and in this case, a colony would live in a hive, we have three different kinds or castes of honeybees. And we'll talk about those real quick. The first one, and typically there's only one in the hive, is the queen. And she's very different than the other bees. She has this long abdomen, and that allows her to back down into these cells of beeswax and lay eggs. She produces a bunch of pheromones, and if you don't know what a pheromone is, I'm going to encourage you to look that up. And those pheromones help communicate to all the other bees what's going on in the hive. And as long as that queen is there, she produces one hive out of her jaw that says, I'm here, don't make any more queens. Later on, when she gets older and either swarms or dies, that smell, that pheromone goes away, and the other bees know it's time to make a new queen. That's part of how they reproduce. Another bee that you see out in the wild and in the hive, and this is the one you see the most of, is the female worker bee. Almost any time you see a honeybee out in nature on a flower or a tree, it's going to be a worker bee, a female bee. This girl is covered with pollen. You can see the yellow specks all over her, and she's got a whole bunch right back here on her hind leg in a pollen basket is what we call that. She'll take that back to the hive and some other honeybees will help her offload that and they'll make food out of that. 
There's one other bee in the hive, a type of bee rather, and I think, personally, I think he's the cutest one of all. You tell me. That's the drone, that's the male. And he's very distinctive because he has big eyes in the front, he's a lot larger than the worker bee, and he's a lot, uh, a lot more thick in the middle. His overall job is to help reproduce that hive every year. And once he's done with his job, he either dies or gets kicked out of the hive about October of every year. So those are your three casts, queen, worker, and drone. In keeping honeybees for at least 4,000 years. And we know that because we have hieroglyphics with honeybees and honeybee workers on it. And we also have cave paintings with honeybees and people collecting nectar out of those trees. At least 4,000 years. Honeybees are very healthy to our diet as humans because about one-third of everything that we eat is pollinated by honeybees. And 90% of our U.S. orchards are pollinated by honeybees. This morning I had coffee, I had a little bit of chocolate, I had almonds, I had an apple, and I had a little taste of honey. And all five of those things are pollinated by honeybees. Students, if you want an interesting report to put together, do a uh, research paper on all the different things that honeybees pollinate. You'll see a multitude of different different plants. It's incredible. Honeybees are the only insect that produce food for us. And of course that food is what we eat. It's called honey. It takes one life of a honeybee to make up one twelfth of a teaspoon of honey. Twelve honeybees to make one teaspoon is another way to look at that. Honey is antiviral, antibacterial, and antifungal. It's very, very clean, and consequently it lasts for a very long time. And we know that because we found some honey uh, in Egypt again. There were some archaeologists digging around. They found a little clay pot. They determined that that clay pot was 2,000 years old, and yet that honey was still good. It did not spoil. Honey bees also make us beeswax. They make pollen, they make propolis, and they make honeybee venom. And all of those things can be used in some type of industry, whether it's food or uh, makeup or medicine. There's a lot of different ways that honeybee products can be utilized. One other thing is since we're making this in June 2020, some of the facts and figures may change depending on when you see this video. So I would encourage you all to do your own research on honeybees and see how important they are to U.S. agriculture. The bottom line is though that farmers are incredibly important to the U.S. and part of that farming picture is how important honeybees are to the U.S. I got a bee jacket like you noticed Chris had one on that I wear and uh, most time I just the jacket's easy to get on and off. And I wear bibs most of the time. I wear some bibs and people wonder, if they sting through there? <laughs> no. As long as I keep the bees calm, but use my smoker. And uh, smoke calms the bees down. And if you're going to beehive without something to calm them down, that's when they're going to come out. Mm -hmm. You calm them down before you go into the beehive. It helps. I wear gloves, protect my hands, and uh, this is a hive tool. The honeybees glue the hive together, so I gotta have a special hive tool to go pry the lid off and get in the hive. Uh, it weighs about three or four pounds, but something to remember is it takes about eight pounds of honey to make one pound of beeswax. Eight pounds of honey to make one pound of beeswax. There's a lot of energy invested into making beeswax and that's why it's more expensive than honey. Mr. Benny has an old-fashioned hive right here and this is called a skep. S-K-E-P. Skep. And old beekeepers used to keep their bees inside of the bell and what they had to do every year to get honey was to crush the entire nest and kill all those bees. So that was not very effective at all. You'd get your honey and wax, but you killed all your bees. So later, about a hundred years ago, there was a fella named Reverend Langstroth, and he invented the Langstroth hive. 
And this hive has two major parts on it. There's um, right here is a deep or a hive body. And this is kind of like the living room and bedroom for the bees. Up here on the top, this is a medium and it's called a honey super. And that's where we keep or where the bees keep their kitchen and pantry, basically. And if you could go inside, you would see honeycomb like this, all filled with nectar. And once they cap that nectar over with more wax, we call it honey. But that's what bees do to make both the bottom and the top uh, livable and, and make it storable for honey. And you can see that perfect hexagon shape all the way through there. It's really incredible what those honeybees do. It's like a, what a honeybee hive looks like. You've got the brood chamber down here. You've got some honey supers up here, which I leave on to, so for the bees to leave, survive. They have honey to eat in the wintertime. But now I'm taking off a honey super here that's full of honey, and I've got a, a big scape under it. It's got a triangle, it's got a hole, and then underneath it's got a triangle. And the bees can go out, but they don't know how to get back. So I can go get this honey without having bees in it. 